Another feature in JavaScript that you will come across very frequently is the idea of a callback function. So what is a callback function? Well, in its simplest terms, a callback function is when you call one function and then you tell it, when you're finished running, please call this other function. The other function, that's the callback. There are built-in callback functions. Some JavaScript methods belonging to existing objects have parameters that they require. The method will want to know, hey, what function am I supposed to call when I'm finished? Other times, you'll build your own. You'll have one function, and you pass it a second function as one of the input parameters, and then it will call that when it's complete. So let's do a, a make your own first, and then we'll look at some of the built-in ones. So I'm going to have a function called do thing, and it can do a whole bunch of stuff. We can declare variables, assign values to them, do lots of other things, and so on. Lots and lots of code inside here. And then, when we're complete, after we've successfully done all of them, we'll have passed in the name of a function that we want to call. So inside this variable will be the name of another function. When we're complete, we call it. So elsewhere in my code, I would be calling the function do thing. And say there's a function called hello. It just logs out hello. Do thing I know is expecting to get one argument, one parameter passed in. And I'm going to pass in the name of this function without the parentheses. I don't want to run the function right here. I just want to pass in its name like that. That is the name of this function. This will be passed into here. So when I call do thing, I'm passing the name of this function into here. When this function is complete, it will run other. There we go. Hello was consoled out by the function hello. And the function hello is being called from inside here because we took its name and we passed it into this variable. This variable, because it's a function, we can add the parentheses and say run that function. Okay, so that's making your own callback. That's really all it is. One of the... Um, actually, before I comment this out, one of the concepts that can be a little challenging when you start using some of the built-in functions is that... Uh, the built-in functions with callbacks, rather. This function that you're going to run, sometimes it needs additional parameters passed to it. So when we're calling hello, this parameter is going to be passed down into here and then used in this function in some manner. So I'm calling do thing. It's going to do a bunch of things and then it's going to call this function for me. This function, when it's called, is going to pass back some information. Okay. There's the name. There is the string, both of these being generated from inside of the hello function. The hello function was being passed a value. We didn't pass the name Steve here. The name Steve is coming from someplace else in the code. We don't know where. We're just calling this function. This function is responsible for making this one run. And somewhere in the code, there's a variable being created, and that variable is being passed on to here. So we can use the value that was generated elsewhere. All right, so that's building your own. Now, just as an example, we can use some of the built-in ones. Set timeout. We can... Actually, I'll leave this here. I'm changing my mind a lot while writing this code. I'm going to make use of this hello function.
So if you don't know how set timeout works, there's another video in the series. I'll put the link in the comments about how set timeout works. But basically, this function is going to wait for 2000 milliseconds, and then it's going to call this function. And we're going to pass in this parameter. So we're allowed to put a whole list of parameters at the end here, and they'll all be passed to here after this delay. This is a callback function. So set timeout requires as its first parameter a callback function. It calls this function after it's complete. So after it has waited a minimum of 2000 milliseconds or 2 seconds, it will call this function and it will pass this to the function. So that right there will become the parameter. There. So you can see there was a bit of a delay to roughly two seconds, and then it wrote out the message. So that's a set timeout. That is one of the built-in callback functions. Uh, it uses a callback. Um, when you have a for each loop, so names, Inga, Tom, Matthias, Carlos. With those names, I'm going to do a for each loop. Names dot for each. Okay, there's the method. That's all it is. This wants to have a callback function. That's the first parameter that it's looking for. It wants to know what function am I supposed to call for each of these names. If I put in hello, there, that is the callback function. This is the function that's going to be called once for each one of the elements in this array right here. So four times this is going to be called. Now it is waiting for one parameter here, but as we've covered in other videos, the for each loop is actually able to accept up to three, so it can take the element, Inga, Tom, Mat Matias, and Carlos, it can take the element, it can take their index number, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it can also take the entire array. So down here we could put three things. This callback function will be passing us three values. We're only using the first one, but putting those there doesn't hurt anything. Now if I run this, there we go. Hello Inga, hello Tom, hello Matias, hello Carlos. This function being called four times, once for each of those names, and when the callback function is run, this function is being passed one at a time. The element, the index, and the array. Boom, boom, boom. Those three values are being passed in each time this is called. And it's the for each method. This is the one that's responsible for it. It's the one that goes into the names array says, give me the very first element, and it passes it to this function. It says, okay, I'm going to call you, and I'm going to pass you three things. One, two, three. And then it goes in here and says, give me the next element. All right, I'm going to call this function, and I'm going to pass it the next three values. So that is another example of a callback function. And just one last one, the navigator object. Geolocation get current position. In the browser, there is a navigator object. Now this isn't going to work uh, because I'm doing this uh, in Node, so there is no navigator object in Node. But in the browser, if I was running this, the navigator object has a geolocation property. The geolocation property has a get current position method. And this method accepts three parameters. The, three param the first two parameters are both callback functions, so there are two callback functions. The first one is the success callback. That means if this successfully got the geolocation position and all the details about that, it's going to call this function. If it doesn't work if this fails for one of the three possible reasons. Position error 
this function is going to run. So it's going to call this one or this one. And then options is just, it's an object with parameters that you can pass in like that. And for this to work properly, we, that means somewhere in the code, I'm going to have a function called got position. Somewhere else in the code, I'm going to have a position error function. And this one, when this is called, get current position is going to pass along a position object. Now it doesn't have to be called position, it can be just p or whatever you want to call the variable, but this will be a position object with all the details about your geolocation. The error is going to be passed an error object. So we've got two variables. This one, when this if this function is called, there's a position object. If, the, if this function is called, there's an error object passed in. These are both callback functions, and this method is responsible for gathering the required parameters and passing it to either this or this. You'll never get both being called, but this or this will be called by this method and it will automatically pass this information along for you. And that's the final example of a callback function. These are all valid examples. There's a lot more examples out there. And um, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Any questions, as always, put them in the comments. And I will add the code just for this code so you have that sample. And that's it. <laughs>